My name is Zach Peeper, and welcome back to the adventure. Hey everyone, thanks for being here. Uh, recently, Blair White did another video on the TikTok fake mental illness trend. Um, Blair was going at it from the social contagion aspect of the trans issue, um, and Blair chose not to dive into the other popularized disorders, uh, to quote Blair, because it's outside the wheelhouse, but I'm going to. First, before I get into the nuts and the, the nitty gritty, I want to get personal and share my story. I was diagnosed with anxiety disorder at six. I did my first stint of therapy shortly after, about a year. I began hearing the first, the first distinct voice with an individual name at 12. It called itself Frank of all the stupid fucking names for some voice in your head to, to take, right? I was further diagnosed with depression at 15. And in my adulthood, at the age of 28, I was diagnosed with schizophrenia. You'd be anxious and depressed too if, as a kid, all of your instincts were telling you that uh, you had to get out of bed at 12 at night, 1 at night, to check the door and windows of the house for the third time so that your loved ones didn't die some horrible death by a home intruder or whatever. My schizophrenia manifests in two alternate personalities in my head and myriads of voices that I hear in varying degrees of volume and distance. I've suffered with a voice telling me to commit horrific crimes since I was a young teen. That first voice that popped up. I've seen visual hallucinations when I was stone cold sober, and my pattern recognition systems are grossly overactive. That's, that's being the conspiracy theorist with the yarn on the wall and making connections that aren't logically there. My schizophrenia has driven me to contemplate suicide for thousands of hours of my life. That's not an exaggeration. I've attempted suicide multiple times by OD. The by far the most significant attempt was taking nearly a gram of MDMA that I tested myself and tested positive for fentanyl. And I tested it like five times so I know for a fact it was in there. <laughs> Heart just wouldn't quit beating. One night, during my last stint in therapy in 2019, I stood on the West Seattle Bridge, which was closed off at the time, and I contemplated suicide by jumping. I don't know how long I was up there. While I was up there, I sent a voicemail to my therapist in the voice of one of the alternate voices in my head one of the one of the voices I don't, I'm not sure if you would call it an alternate because I'm schizophrenic not DID my therapist then tried to convince me to go on to uh, schizophrenic meds psychoactive medication anti-psych meds now the reason I am sharing this is because I want to impress upon you how much distress and additional burden my mental illness has added to my life. I have laid awake at night worrying about things that would never happen. I have seen hallucinations of things that have driven men to suicide. I've heard my enemies whisper in my ear from across the room 
and I have suffered the taunting voice of my shadow telling me to do unspeakable things, things that carry a life or a death sentence since I was in my early teens. So people like this I have and this Hi, welcome to a day in the life of somebody with dissociative identity disorder. It's 8.30 in the morning, I'm pretty sure Asher woke up and got coffee and I just switched it. Hey, it's Art. It is 8.40. Asher was just out and then I switched it. And this... My name, My name is Tristan. Tristan. I'm, I'm the host of the Asylum system. system and if you have met us, you have probably met me. My name is Monix. I am the primary protector of the asylum system. I mainly hold traumas regarding adulthood abuse and adult abusers. Hi, I'm Nikki. I'm the social protector of the asylum system. I've been around for a very, very long time. Hi, I'm Doe. They have no idea what it is like to lose your sense of reality. To be unsure if what you're experiencing is actually real. They are pretending to have a super rare mental illness that usually only comes up when both genetic and environmental factors converge, as is what happened with me. Studies show that between 0.25% and 0.64% of the population actually has schizophrenia. Disassociative personality disorder occurs in anywhere from one half percent to 2% of the population. 7% of the general population may have the disorder but remain undiagnosed. I think that's been inflated artificially by these trends. They have fallen prey to the imposed Marxism of the victim hierarchy. They feel as though there is nothing special about them, so they create this web of lies where they have a super rare and highly individualistic disorder. But the problem is that by lying to themselves, they are harming themselves and society. They are actually giving themselves mental illness that mimics the mental illness they claim to have. Because lying is poisonous to you. Body, mind, soul. You lie to yourself enough, you start to believe it. And if you're working under the delusion of a lie, that leads to you to all kinds of less than savory pathologies. More importantly than that, though, perhaps, is the damage they are doing to others. By lying about these disorders, they are making it harder for accurate stats to exist, harder for real sufferers to be properly diagnosed, and more likely that real sufferers will be dismissed out of hand by those who cannot tell the difference between an edgelord narcissist on TikTok and someone with a genuine case of schizophrenia or DID. This also makes the general population less safe. Because how can you, as a regular person walking down the street or interacting with someone in a somewhat closed setting like a church or an office, how can you, as a regular layman with no mental health training, be expected to make a crack judgment between a faker and a genuine crazy when confronted with someone exhibiting signs of mental illness. If the fakes outnumber the real cases 10 to 1, most people will become desensitized and brush off the threat. And then it will be easier for genuine threats, violent schizophrenics, people with disassociative personality disorder that are prone to violence when they disassociate. It will be easier for those genuine threats to hurt people. 
These liars on TikTok are harming themselves and society in profound and unquantifiable ways. And they have to be stopped. TikTok needs to be banned because its algorithms deliberately push this faked insanity, this the real insanity of faking insanity. And they do it because China hates us and wants to see us destroyed and they know how destructive this shit is. At an individual level, we must confront our friends and family who begin to self-diagnose and submerge themselves in this idiotic trend. We must tell people who are faking to stop and how much it damages them and society. Fakers, if enough people confront them, can be talked out of faking. But genuine sufferers will never be talked out of their symptoms, except, of course, by years of clinical therapy, most of the time, with a skilled clinician. I cannot stress enough to you how important it is that we pull ourselves as a society back away from this madness. I can tell you as someone who has suffered, as someone who knows how bad it can really get, as someone who's seen the depths of mental illness in other people and myself, we cannot as a society continue to allow madness to run around unchecked. Thanks for listening. Godspeed and welcome to the adventure.